Is this whole thing CG? They're gonna make a whole, uh, she's a natural awesome DJ storyline, aren't they? Okay, but like, what about the DJ? <laughs> this whole thing is about DJ. Hello fellow anime geeks and welcome to my last anime series premiere impressions video of the fall 2020 season. We did it! <sighs> As usual, I'll be answering these four questions to better organize my thoughts, and today I'm talking about the anime component of a music media franchise, D4DJ First Mix. This had one measly maltag, music, but I'm gonna say that the genre is actually character piece. Same as I said for Hypnosis Mike, because in fact, this was my initial reaction. Is this like a Hypnosis Mike female equivalent? What is going on here? The reason why I'm not just calling this a cute girl's music slice of life is because while this does have more of a narrative than Hypnosis Mike, it actually still focuses on the CG concerts. Now, this isn't my first encounter with this kind of anime, but I'm ashamed to admit that it took me until this season to finally understand the format of making an original animated story to accompany pre-released character music. The about section on the D4DJ official website kind of implies that the production company behind this, Bushy Road, is hoping for another successful venture, the likes of their other big musical franchises, Bang Dream, which actually was based on a manga before moving on to spawn live concerts and a rhythm game, and Review Starlight, which is actually based on a stage play, which is no wonder because I really thought that the premise of the anime with that underground stage competition was kind of bizarre. It looks like the first thing to come out of the big D4DJ music franchise was the live performances. And now in this show they have been fully animated in awkward CG, which I find kind of strange because it's not like they're taking augmented reality concerts and then recording them in the show for the fans like ARP Backstage Pass. And the narrative of this show actually doesn't seem to have anything to do with the actual girls from these groups. We follow a girl named Ninku who in a mean girl style plotline has transferred in from Africa and for some reason that translates as she knows absolutely nothing about how the world works and has the personality of a newborn fawn. Dazzled by all of the cool DJ group performances at her new school, she willfully enlists three other girls who all happen to have the skills necessary to be in a group with her. Now she herself actually has a perfect internal meter despite the fact that she knows next to nothing about music. Which moves us right along to uniqueness. But really quick, there's this creepy marionette in the cafe that they frequent. Anybody know what that's about? The music in this is obviously pretty good. It's not my personal taste, but I can appreciate what they're trying to do, remixing classics and creating original songs that fit the style of each of these groups. Speaking of which, the opening song was really cute and it mixed in the different genres that were representative of each of these groups. And what they're doing with their website and their YouTube channel is really cool for fans. Not only are they releasing the anime sub for free on YouTube, but you can also find their real life concerts and specials with the actors in their channel. Link in the description. But is the anime worthwhile? Well, I think that that depends on the goal. As a standalone narrative, this one wasn't for me. The plot was so thin that we had to employ tricks like showing the same scene twice or drawing out a deadpan reaction for so long I thought that my video player froze. As bonus material for fans of the group, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but ARP Backstage Pass actually made more sense to me because that's telling us the story of the artists behind an augmented reality group and how they got together. In D4DJ, it's a little bit strange because we're assigning personality traits to real life people using their CG avatars. As advertisement for the live performances, it obviously worked because it made me curious enough to go look them up. In fact, I would have preferred a mixture of 2D animation and live action segments, kind of like Gal and Dino. I mean, after a while, your eyes do kind of get adjusted to the full CG, and in some frames where they're not moving, it's even kind of cute, but in general, it was just too jarring for me. That said, despite the flimsy narrative and the awkward CG, this is doing okay on Mal. In fact, it's doing better than a lot of the stuff out this season. Maybe it's the power of cute girls, maybe I just don't get it. I just don't get why you would sit through cringy CG representations when you've got the actual real life cute girls. And on that note, I'll catch you in the next video, which will probably be my season guide.
flashback to just five minutes ago. That's very helpful. Thank you. Oh my gosh, they're really going to show us the whole scene from five minutes ago. And there's the whole scene from five minutes ago. It's so weird how the clothing doesn't move like clothing. Oh, this makes no sense. How long is this freaking thing? Okay, it's a normal episode length. It just feels long. 